Hey everyone, my name is Renee. Welcome or welcome back to my channel created by Renee. So today I'm back with another paper mache tutorial. No, I'm not starting a new trend, but I am going to show you how to make use of this very basic supply plus something you probably have laying around your house that you'd like to see go away. So without further ado, let's get started. Plastic bags. While some countries have outlawed these, many countries still allow their distribution. Today, we're going to do something fun and creative to use these bags up instead of letting them go to a landfill. So if you're like me, you have a bunch of these bags just laying around waiting to be used as small trash bags or for some missed use that we haven't thought of yet. Well, let's find something useful and fun to do with these. For starters, you'll need several rolls of basic yellow masking tape, not the painter's tape because that type of tape is made to pull back off. Uh, basic it can be generic yellow masking tape from your local store or I'm sure Amazon sells it. I'll link it below if I can find some. So basically you're just gonna grab you some bags and start taping them into a shape. This can be any shape under the sun. Um, I'm just gonna speed it up here so you can see. I just tape this into a circle and I, I try to do enough that it's solid, it, you can't squeeze it so that I have a nice solid shape and it's still lightweight um, because I only, I just squeezed bags together until I got a, a circle and I kept going around it with the tape just to make it nice and secure. Easy peasy, right? Once I'm done creating the shapes that I want with the bags and the tape, the next step is paper mache. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. I make my tape forms for use under both pulp style paper mache like this and under the strip method where you're layering glue soak strips onto a form. Today I'm gonna demonstrate how to use the shapes under the paper mache pulp. So if you don't know, if you haven't seen my how to make paper mache pulp video, I will link it right here at the top and you can go watch that to learn how to make this. It's basically a clay like substance made of paper and glue. And now I'm going to show you how easy it is to just layer this onto your shape, onto your tape shape. Take your time, this needs a little patience. Sometimes pieces of pulp will fall back off while you're trying to stick it on there. But um, just take your time and gradually add it to cover the entire shape. And then you can start to shape and smooth it how you like. See how smooth that's getting? And this part makes me so happy because it's getting so smooth and I'm getting the surface the way I want it, I'm nice and even, and if I need to, I can add more pulp to make the shape bigger, um, and then I can go back and smooth it some more, and then if I need to, I can also remove some pulp to make the shape smaller. If you just take a peek there, you can see the tape all still inside, but we're gonna smooth it back. And I do this tossing back and forth when I add more pulp into the shape because it helps blend the pulp together easier. Here's a hack that can make it easier for you to apply pulp to your shape. Sometimes the pulp just won't behave and stick to the shape. So try dipping it into a glue water mixture that I call slip. Mix glue and water until it's the consistency of milk and then dip your shape into that mixture. It, I go into detail more about my paper mache slip in the paper pulp making video that I posted previously. Say that five times fast. Um, <laughs> but the slip, like, it doesn't hurt the tape or anything, and it, it does make it easier for the pulp to stick to the shape. Here's a closer look at the slip. This comes in handy in so many phases of paper mache work, both paper mache pulp and working with paper mache strips, including this hack that I like um, where I use the slip to smooth the surface. I mentioned in the previous video that throughout the drying process, which often lasts several days, uh, I go back and smooth the pieces continuously because as they dry and shrink, 
as the water evaporates from them, you'll see bumps arise here and there. That's normal. And so I go back over them. Uh, I pick them up and, and smooth them repeatedly throughout the drying process to help them be more even. Anyway, um, here's another shape. I want to demonstrate several shapes so you can see how this works for different shapes. Um, it's, it's not really complicated. Don't overcomplicate it. Just, you know, be free with it and, and just experiment until you get the shape that you like. If you don't have enough, if you run out of bags while you're working with the shape, it's really easy to just crumple up some more bags and add another piece to that shape. That's what I'm doing right here. I'm shaping another little piece that I'm going to add to the shape that I was just showing you. Something else I wanted to mention, um, some may wonder why use a shape like this under paper mache. Well, basically paper mache is typically pretty light, but when you're working with pulp, which is sort of compacted fibers, it can tend to get heavy. So even though I'm making something as simple as say a ball shape, I'm going to use a tape ball underneath so it's not unnecessarily heavy. Now I'm just adding more masking tape to securely attach that extra piece. Real quick, if you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button. It's a big help to me as a new YouTuber. Uh, also comment below and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new content I have coming soon. Time to add another piece on. And voila. Did you guess what I was making before we got to this point? Anyway, this particular piece, I'm going to be finishing using the strip paper mache method um, because I feel like it's going to be more conducive to the finished look I want to achieve. And I'll actually be demonstrating the rest of this piece in a separate video. Um, on to the next piece. We're going to move forward with a different shape. Um, another example of a shape you can create with the bags and tape. But I did want to make a side note about the which paper mache technique you choose, whether you go with strip paper mache or pulp paper mache. It's a sort of a gauging thing that you learn once you worked with both and you know which one will get you the, the effect, the result that you want. I don't know a better way to describe it, but I just know when a shape is going to work better in pulp or when it'll work better with using the strip method. So, and it also comes down to details at both do details well in different ways. And that's the best way I can describe it. If you want more of a clay experience where you can sort of use tools or your fingers and add in details, then that the pulp is going to work for you. Um, okay. So moving on, I just want to stop and, and point out that you can also use rope like I'm demonstrating here. I don't often use this, but if you are short on tape, which maybe that's what was going on right here, or I just wanted to show that you can also use string or rope to shape your piece. Okay, and again, um, once you get the shape to where you want it, um, you can go back over it a few times with the tape. Um, you might notice me squeezing it every so often because I don't want to be able to squeeze it or I don't want it to cave in when I start adding paper mache. And now I've got the shape propped up on a tray covered with plastic to keep it from sticking. And I'm going to start adding the pulp. Just a reminder, take your time, relax, enjoy the process, be patient because often pieces will fall back off as you're working with it and you just have to take your time and blend it and just try to enjoy the process. I've been doing it for years and pieces still fall off while I'm trying to work with them. And once I finish adding um, the pulp and covering the entire shape, I will go back 
after a day or so letting it get letting it set and dry a little bit I'll go back and add shapes onto it like a nose or other details of course incorporating my slip mixture to help things stick and just with pulp it's not like clay you have to go a little slower and be patient with it um, for it to sort of settle together and stick now here's another method that I wanted to share. Um, I, I wanted to show that another great way to start these shapes on the, with the bags is with wire forms. And this isn't actually the wire that I would typically use for this. It's just, uh, it was close by. I grabbed it um, and we're going with it. Um, I usually use a harder wire that's harder to bend. And I love to employ old hanger wire if I can but I will recommend if you're using old hangers please wear gloves and use pliers um, and be careful so you don't stab yourself or cut yourself with the hanger wire um, the pliers um, you'll use those to sort of cut and shape the wire to what the shape you want it to be and the reason I like the hanger wire is because it's you you're recycling again and it's harder and stronger so then once you get your shape created then you can just start taping the bags onto your wire shape and like how easy is that shout out to my existing subscribers thank you so much for hanging in there while i work on new videos i really love the idea of taking something throwaway and that would end up in landfills and using it to create mass in a sculpture that you made yourself in like some beautiful sculpture that means something to you and um so if you actually do this project or you make something similar using the tape and bag technique and you want to share it i would love to see it if you tag me in it on instagram on instagram i'm at created by renee and um or you can email me a picture to the email uh in the about section on this channel moving on to another shape i'm just showing you another shape just to demonstrate there's so many different things that you can make with this technique um and um for some the wire adding the wire framework in there makes it easier and um, i don't know if you noticed but i stuck a hole in a little cube a wood cube earlier just to test it out see how it would look and i don't attach this in here permanently yet I really just want to see how it looks and then I go paper mache the piece and paint it and finish it and then I stick it into the piece the wood block permanently and that's my bag and tape technique I hope you enjoyed this video and that you hit the like button and the subscribe button and if you have any questions or comments leave them below and I'll see you soon by creating an imaginary picture usually it's something that moves